Good morning, friends. So much going on in the world today, and I'm going to be coming uh, back later this evening. We're going to be talking about uh, the different war fronts that are going on, everything from Sudan, Ukraine, North Korea, or not North Korea, but uh, Taiwan, Russia, the Arctic uh, region, what they're doing. They're going to be talking about that later this evening, but I wanted to share something with you. Uh, you know, you get a lot of people out there that just think you're nuts uh, over aliens uh, or fallen angels, whatever you want to call them. But uh, Tucker Carlson did an interview with some of these guys here. And uh, it looks like uh, at, oh gosh, can't quite make it out. N-E-L-K-E-X-T-R-A. Uh, these guys here talking about uh, brain injuries that a doctor that he knew about uh, uh, from alien aircraft. And he's going to be talking about how that they like to go around nuclear facilities. Well, we've shared that with you guys many, many times. Uh, that happens quite frequently. Uh, I was unaware of the brain injuries, but, uh, you know, I want you to listen into this clip here. It's five minutes long, but I think it's well worth your time to hear Tucker Carlson saying the very things that we've been telling you for a long time. Listen in. And it was only in the past five years when all this evidence... Well, now we got to figure out why we don't have the audio. So give me one moment here. Um, sometimes those things happen as well. Let's see the volumes up. Headphones. Yeah, that's right where the problem is. We need to be on real tech speakers, and we are now back. So let's listen in. What emerged? And I'd be like, well, that doesn't. That's not true. It doesn't seem true to me. Like I, I don't know what the truth is, but I can tell when someone's lying. It's my one gift. And I would see these people lying, and I'd be like, why are they lying? Like, I know they're lying, but why? And so I really came to this like at the age of fifty. Like, that's very late. It's like I never for a second thought you have UFOs. What changed your attitude at fifty? The evidence. Which is what? Well, we, we, well, oh my gosh. Okay. The Pentagon was required by the last defense authorization bill to like produce some of their files on UFOs. And it turns out they have known about this since the end of the Second World War, which ended in 1945. Been a huge increase during that war, during the war as well. Huge increase in UFO sightings, in UFO crashes. And it turns out the federal government has been tracking this for 80 years and lying about it. So why? Well, that's a great question and I can't answer it theories, but I don't know. But here's what I learned. The first question is, is this real? Or am I just being a crazy person who's spending too much time on the internet? Well, this summer, we got a call. We didn't reach out. This person called us. Lexi, who's standing right there, who's a genius, one of our producers, gets this call from this guy who's a tenured Stanford medical school professor. And he wants to come on the show. Now, this guy has a couple patents, and so he's rich. And he's got tenure at one of the most prestigious schools in the world. So, like, He's not a flake. He comes on and he's like, 11 years ago, the US government reached out to me because I'm an expert on head injuries, on brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries. As a physician, they had all these court cases from families of US servicemen, over 100, who'd been killed by UFOs. The Department of Defense was refusing to give them death benefits or medical benefits. And he's like, so they're in the courts. And I was like, there are over 100 servicemen killed by UFOs? Like, what? He's like, yeah. And there are court cases about it. I'm like, why isn't this on the front page of the New York Times? I don't know. But he goes, I'm involved in it. I'm the, you know, I'm one of the researchers. I'm the expert witness in these cases. Holy shit. What does that mean? And he's like, for example, UFOs appear to be tra attracted for whatever reason to nuclear energy. So at nuclear missile bases in the upper Midwest, for example, nuclear powered aircraft carriers, nuclear powered submarines are all getting buzzed by these objects, including underwater. And in a number of cases, these things have landed on military bases, including famously in Germany, in West Germany in the 70s, and servicemen have approached them. Like, what is this thing? There's this like giant glowing thing on the base. And they approach and they get traumatic brain injury. Like they are rendered, like, yeah, yeah. they get brain damage or they're killed. And he studied their brains. And they have, this is all totally real. This is not, this is the Department of Defense, dude. And they've all had this damage from some kind of powerful energy that we cannot identify. So then this guy's like, wow, he's just a scientist. He never believed in UFOs. He's like, this is real. I cannot believe this is real. This is like crazy. He's just doing research on it. He's still at Stanford. And it turns out that actually, yes, these things have been shot down and crashed and the US government has the wreckage and it's being held by defense contractors, Raytheon, Lockheed, which are big independent companies, but that work for the US government. They're really part of the Department of Defense, but they're separate. By the way, Raytheon and Lockheed are two of our biggest uh, defense contractors that are heavily, heavily involved 
in space travel, technology that, uh, that is never revealed to the public, uh, reverse engineering of these crafts. Uh, that's how we ended up with the TRB-3s from reverse engineering. And yes, a lot of them are crashed UFOs. Things that I have told you guys for a long, long time uh, over on our Patreon channel. Uh, you can see this type of information. And now we got Tucker, Tucker saying it. Uh, let's continue to listen. So you can't, their sunshine laws don't apply to them. You can't actually get information from them. It's a very tricky way to hide information. And they have the wreckage from these crafts. Hmm. And I'm like, really? Are we positive these aren't like advanced Russian or Chinese? No, of course not. Is it more like the government or whatever is just this good at hiding it or people just don't care? Well, I think it's a combination of both. I think it's too big for people to metabolize. Like if Prince Harry says something stupid, everyone's like, I can't believe Prince Harry. Because like that's manageable. You can like, oh, this douchey fake prince with his stupid wife from Santa Monica. Like I get that. But the idea that we're not alone in the universe and we're getting buzzed by these objects whose behavior defies physics, like that just explodes too many categories in my head. I just can't deal with it. And I think that's part of it. But I'll tell you this, the most interesting from my perspective, it's, I don't know if it's a consensus, but a lot of people, serious people, not crazy people who study this stuff, U.S. government employees, seem to believe that these objects are coming from under the oceans. So the conventional view is they're coming in from outer space. There's not actually a lot of, you know, something enters the atmosphere, we can see it yeah, on satellite, yeah. and there's not any evidence of that, actually. There, there actually is evidence for the stuff that comes in from space as well. Uh, but it is more prominent about the different UFOs that come out of the oceans and stuff. Uh, we've shared that over on Patreon before as well. There are, we have massive civilizations of a extraterrestrial life in the oceans. Uh, off the coast of California is very prominent. Up near the Alaskan waters there, another huge uh, group there. Um, and just depending on the type of technology depends on the type of civilizations that's underwater there and the type of aliens that live there. Also from within caverns of the earth, inner earth, uh, we've had uh, UFOs to where we have filmed them as they're coming down near volcanoes and then suddenly they just disappear. They're not even there anymore. Uh, we don't know quite know how they pull that off either. Tucker's going to talk about where they go alongside of the uh, submarines and can move at, at super fast speeds. Very true. I've shared that with you guys many, many times before as well on Patreon. So let's finish this up. And I uh, uh, figured I'd share it here on Israeli News Live just to kind of get you guys going there. Don't forget, too, though, to subscribe, uh, like the video, give it a thumbs up there and share it. And especially subscribe uh they are doing everything they can to block our subscriptions there and uh they they take you off on a regular basis resubscribe whatever you got to do uh we appreciate it thank you mm -hmm. maybe it's happening but we don't know that it is there's a lot of evidence these things are coming out of the ocean including video too, of these objects coming out of the water at high speed or even more amazing descending at Mach 3 into the water. And then, of course, we have a huge submarine what fleet. What the fuck? What the fuck? Then we have a huge submarine fleet, American, but also Chinese and Russian, underwater with pretty sensitive measurement devices, sonar, etc. And they have recorded these objects doing hundreds of knots underwater. So like, let's just stop there. Wait, what's knots? Uh, it's 1.1 miles per hour. It's oh. a way that we measure objects in the water. Oh. It's 1.1 miles. It's a little more than Mile, mile per hour, and a, and, a, and a mile is a measurement that we use in the United States. Right. It's distinct from a kilometer, Still which I think is right. Yeah. common in Canada. But anyway, <laughs> these things are moving at impossibly high speeds. So just like, let's just apply common sense for one second. If I take a 45 ACP, you know, a, a 45 caliber handgun and fire it at you underwater in, a, say, a swimming pool 50 feet away, you can catch the bullet because the resistance is so strong from the water that objects can't move that fast underwater. We know that, but they are, and they're moving without any visible means of propulsion. So no wake, no bubbles. Where, where have we like tracked that all over speed? the world? There you go. There you go. I, I just wanted to share that with you. Maybe you've seen this already, um, but that is definitely something to think about. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe there. Thank you for the support that you share with us here on Israeli News Live as well. You make things possible for us. God bless you.